Okay. Barbara, can you hear us all right? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. I I um I didn't realize I was a member of the committee. I was just joining because I'm interested. So uh, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. So, uh, you know, I didn't know uh, to what extent uh, the BPW may have had or if there's any in your committee t discussion of uh, anything having to do with the WARDA, WARDA Act and any petitions that, that the city or the BPW might make uh, with respect to the, the upcoming WARDA bill. I, I don't know. I'm sorry to say. I'm not aware of anything. Okay. Anyone else have anything to add on that one? I don't. No, okay, that's fine. C3 then, Barbara, do you want to give us a bit of an update on um, what the BPW's mitigation is and where that is? And um, if you want to touch on maybe even your uh, your committee and, and the work that they're doing, that might be helpful. Um, okay, I, I'm totally unprepared for this, but I, I figured Austin would be on, but... Um, the mitigation planning committee for the BPW had a meeting recently, and we're looking at um, putting all our assets on GIS, and that's that's coming along, so we can plan on, you know, sea level rise and what we need to do about that. Um, we're also looking at partnering with EPA. Um, they have a program called CREA, and, and they look at resiliency issues, climate for um, coastal areas, and um, they will help us to define our risks and um, look for funding sources and things like that. So we have agreed that we will partner with them on that, and uh, it's just a question of when they get around to, to us. Um, in terms of the contingency committee uh, for the wastewater treatment plant, we have um, we've made some interesting progress. We will be visiting another wastewater treatment plant in Berlin, Maryland, um, later in the month that has an alternate, a newer technology than um, what we currently use and and different from what the county is talking about using at Wolf Neck. And then earlier in that week, I think it's the last week in October, we'll be having a few representatives from um, Aqua Aerobic Systems who represent uh, Narita technology, a different wastewater treatment technology that takes up much less space. And we'll be talking hearing from them, they'll be coming up with a preliminary engineering design. So we're looking forward to that. And I was at the uh, Coast Day meeting or event yesterday, kind of trying to pick people's brains about wetlands and um, how resilient they might be and whether if there's an option for um, doing anything with the wetlands near the wastewater treatment plant, but that's very early days, you know. And uh, that's about all I have to say. I appreciate that, Barbara. That was a good update. And um, appreciate the work that your committee is doing there as well. Um, any questions for Barbara? This might be one of the quicker meetings in the history of the city. Because <laughs> uh, uh, we're also relying on chat for Frag Mighty's updates. Uh, unless, Eleanor, I don't know if you had anything no. to provide. I, I know for sure, you know, that there will still be uh, the use of Roundup as part of that. So I know that one of the things that we had recently was uh, a, a workshop for our environmental subcommittee and and um i know that's an area that they're going to look at is the mm -hmm. use of glycophosphate but you know as of now for the community's benefit um part of our frag mighty's mitigation yes. will continue to include um the spraying of the frag mighty's um so um i mean that's really the only update i've got that's it other than to say that the state does continue to use roundup 
as an approved method of treatment, but yes. Could I add something to C3? Yes, sure thing. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, uh, I just know that the board um, has submitted funding applications through both DEMA and the University of Delaware Institute of Public Administration for all their pump stations resiliency to be studied. Um, it's a significant amount of money. I can't remember the exact amount, but just to let you guys know that's on the table going through the rather long process of trying to get a FEMA grant. And that's kind of still held up in the whole thing, just like our West Cedar flood mitigation funding application that mm. where FEMA is now just allocating their funds to projects that have life saving needs because of all the natural disasters. disasters that we've had over the last six months or so. Does that, does that mean, Charlie, that those aren't lo lost opportunities? They're just delayed opportunities? Like they're still reviewing the applications. They just can't actually get to a point where they'll allocate the the money until that's lifted. Appreciate that update. Um, I I remember at an earlier mitigation committee meeting there was talk about, or Andrew, I think you you raised the issue of couldn't we use goats or something in the wetlands to handle the phragmites? And I don't think that that kind of alternative should be dropped. I think um, it's worth looking at, especially with the concern about use of Roundup and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thought process there too is you don't have to go to it. Uh, you can pen off a few of them, see if see how effective it is in a small area and see, you know, go from there. I think one of the concerns also, that was also raised, uh, forget who it was, but, you know, the fecal matter that the goats might put out in the marsh and to what extent you're you know, contributing to the nitrates that way. I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I agree with you, Barbara. It's always, you know, to look at alternative methods and, and things like that is, is certainly worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, all the geese and ducks and, and what have you in the marsh and in the water that they, they contribute as well. So I, I don't see that as such a big concern. Yeah, the other, I mean, the other thing, too, is we, you know, we seem to be quite diligent about our frag monies, but as I look at other parts of the state, namely the University of Delaware's campus, the frag monies is growing tall and it's not really treated. So it's like, you know, how to what extent is DENREC really, you know, enforcing this and, and you know, to should should we be? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it, so all the way back to when this committee started, it was more about eliminating the fire uh, yeah course. yeah it, i don't know if, if denrick has much had much say in it back then even yeah that's apparently supposedly able to spontaneously combust yeah. is what what they say i don't know i think barbara's right about that though because I, I just went to this conference about future scenario planning yeah and one of the the key items was is like any idea is good like it could be it could seem ridiculous at first but then if you imagine 10 years from now it's actually in place maybe it's not so ridiculous or you can plan around it at least yeah, yeah so that's outside the box thing yeah yeah Austin, the other um charlie had circled back on the um c3 was really just update from bpw mitigation committee barbara gave us a bit of that any you, you caught that and that's she, she covered it well yeah okay i appreciate that um, and then with respect, are you, the other p question I asked is around the WARDA bill and whether there were anything specific that you guys were looking to earmark for that, you know? And, Not specifically. I know what we're doing now is we're going after a lot of um, possibilities. So we're looking at the University of Delaware helping us for physical security. Um, so we were looking at bills for fences, um, anything that could do with cameras, fiber to different areas, um, a lot of like hardening of existing facilities we submitted to, the, I think it was the hazard mitigation grant, but they um, they suspended those fundings because they're underfunded right now. Um, so we're waiting to hear back on that. Uh, and that would be a planning study. And then there would be like a phase two, which would have funding for actually implementing whatever you come up with. Mm. Um, I know that they came out with um, 
EPA came out with funding regarding PFAS, but I don't know funding was it funding for PFAS? It was nineteen yeah. million, yeah. but it's it's earmarked for it's earmarked for underserved communities, tribes. Forget what all of them are. I thought we fit into it. Uh when I read it, it seemed like it was going to be a difficult Outside. fit. Um, so there's there's money out there that we're trying to find, but you know, as as we're looking into it, and I think as time's progressing, I think everybody's doing it at one time. It's kind of like ARPA funds; you're kind of almost competing against each other. So it's it's a little bit tough in that respect, but. And the, I think the biggest one is when we were at the Tricon conference, we had te- we had got a hold of uh, EPA, and EPA does hazard mitigation um, assessments, and we engaged with them after that meeting, and we actually had a, uh, a follow up with them. And it was Press, myself, Robin, and Barbara, and they offer a program where they'll come into a community or they'll come into a community. And it could be a community at large, um, being it could be us, Rehoboth, Broadkill, people that actually, you know, see the changes that are happening with um, frequent storms and tent storms. Um, and so we had an initial discussion with them. They were very interested in doing an assessment that was much larger than they typically do. Um, but we did mention that, that we're not the only ones experiencing it. We would be the first ones in Delaware that would go through the program. Um so we're kind of waiting to see how that plans out. Yeah. Thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also to circle back to C1, uh, Chatham was, I was hoping for him to walk us through, but do you want to let us, from what you know, what we should expect at the tabletop exercise on this one? Yeah. So um, I think the biggest one, uh, this is going to be not a weather event. So this is going to look at it more of a, dare, do I use the term almost like a terrorism attack? Mm-hmm. Um I think it will give us more insight into how both entities work together. Um, it's kind of a, it seems like a far-fetched event that that was kind of actually, well, Chatham and I developed it with with um, the folks uh, that are running the tabletop Olson group, but it's, it's actually based on, and what we asked them to do was provide examples of how this is relevant. Um, and so as, as we kind of move through the exercise, they're actually going to show examples of how this has happened in other communities. And it was, I think one of the reasons that we looked at, uh, the group looked at doing it was because it, it was happening, right? People were like actually shooting these transformers and yeah. just generally causing mayhem. And so we we actually one of the things that triggered it is we sat in at DMAC, we had the state police terrorism group come in and they gave a discussion on different areas that see the most threats. And because we have a very high political influence, there's a commonality between the utilities and the groups that are in those areas because our name gets thrown around on places that they shouldn't be thrown around, like right. the dark web the web. Yeah. That's a good point. And then um, in some ways, this will play out on the, so the the blackout or the power down will be the fit. Is it the, remind us of the date that that's going to happen? October 11th. It's October 11th. So in some ways, you almost have a test yeah. run of what that might look like. And I know the chief has spoken to the fact that he's going to be staffing up extra on, uh, on and be on high alert when the power goes down, because there's an understanding that you know, ring cameras and uh, uh, security systems that normally would be functioning, you know, uh, may not. And and so um, we'll... Because that allergy is the fifth. Yep. Uh, that'd be... Our guys will come in Wednesday night, probably around 10, 11 o'clock. Um, we plan to be in here the whole time. We're going to do work on the system while we have to do a system-wide outage. And then they're hoping to come back on Thursday morning at, at 4. So they're going to start. They're going to turn everything off. Uh, 12 a.m. technically Thursday morning, and then turn everything back on scheduled for 4 a.m. Be 4 a.m. basically Friday. Uh, Thursday. Uh, uh, it's it's confusing. Oh, it's, it's just a short window. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, 
the last one was really similar. You mentioned the Olson group. And so this is, you want to provide us an update here. I think we're. So in FY24, the city budgeted uh, with the Olson group to do an update of their emergency operation plan. And that is what this is talking about. That project will kick off um, next week. And then hopefully by the end of December, I think is what they're planning on January, having a changes that the city needs to make and the new plan. I think that's it. That'll be, that'll be good because when we apply for these various emergency funds through FEMA, they like to know everything mm -hmm. that we've been doing and updating everything. Okay. And the board, just if they're out there, the board may want to um, partake in that and, and possibly either have a, a larger section within the his cities or our own. So maybe worth having that conversation too. No, I've been getting emails on the tabletop. I'm sure everybody has, right? Hey, the tabletop's coming up. Yep. Yeah. It's on my calendar. <laughs> it's great when you're the one that like created the event, but we can't like Chatham and I theoretically we can't do anything. So we're gonna sit back and watch the whole thing. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think you are too. I don't think you're a player. I think you're a evaluator. Uh it got changed. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Marine was a player. Yeah, you were originally an evaluator. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So there looks like is it just Barbara and Sue Ann on there? There's panelists, and then who are the ten other attendees as well? So Jack Anna, she's taken minutes. I think Amory is attending. So if there are any questions, I'll, I'll put out to those that are online. Otherwise, I think if we uh, call for adjournment here where maybe it won't be the quickest meeting of all time, but it'll be up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. All right. Well, with that being said, um, can uh, I get a motion to adjourn? Please let me do it. So moved. Okay. All right. <laughs> all in favor? All right. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Barbara. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. You know, one time I went to the